Okay, boys and girls. Uh, haven't been around for a while. I wanted to level up properly and then do some guide and my thoughts about how to play Paladin as a holy in Season 2. So we will just go through stuff. Not really quickly because there is a lot of things to talk about and a lot of well, kind of bad information online, as you probably could have seen, like people publishing guides that never even played the class, literally, like they just open some fucking best plot list and talk about it and some stat priority from 2005 or some shit. So there's a lot of bad information. I'm just gonna talk on about my views uh, on how to play the spec. Healing is, if you're just starting healing, it can be a bit stressful. And a lot of people have like the healing anxiety. They're just afraid to start healing and go with the group and start doing it, especially not in raids. So that's like the first thing you need to deal with. It's it can be like frustrating and a bit panicky at start, but you just need to like prepare yourself properly and it should be okay. I will just give you a few tips that you can use on all versions of World of Warcraft and any other game, to be honest. If, if, you're, if you want to play on some decent competitive level, you should probably watch a lot of videos about your class spec and healing in general read guides watch people on streams and ask questions people actually love answering questions if you ask me during the stream or on comments on my videos i actually really like that like to have the feedback and communication so whatever you need feel free to ask me or any other content creator they will probably be loving it to explain you stuff and talk to you about it uh, after that like man mindset setting you should really try it with friends or, or try some easier content for example if you're just new just go inside some five-man dungeon work with your new keybinds which i will talk about later work with your new add-ons with your cameras with, with everything that you set up before actual gameplay so you you should probably take it easy first like a few days just to get the hang up of everything and after you've done it you're pretty much set to go like it's really not that stressful when you get to know why and how things work of course you will like have bad days you will cause wipes you will have wipes sometimes it won't be your fault mostly it won't be your fault like 99 percent of time it's not your fault uh if you look at the bigger picture and you shouldn't really be stressing about it especially at start then you got your user interface user interface is basically how you set up your add-ons your v coveras your mouse over macros your general macros uh, your key binds and all that important stuff especially your like v coveras are really important uh, you should have them set up somewhere uh, like this, like in the middle of your screen and your character and you should have like a few important things uh, for your spec. There is a lot of already made v covers that you can get on vago.io. I will post a link of some of them. Uh, this one was actually made by, uh, let me shout, shout out, Sabimaru. I figured this one uh, works for me the best. I did some tweaking of it, but not much. Uh, 
but with really like the important stuff that you can track. Also, I included like one special one for a beacon of light. It will give me a sound a notification when it runs out, like a few seconds before it runs out, it will start spamming me both visually and uh, uh, with sound. This is it. This is the one, like I'll have this icon pop up and uh, some guy will, will yell at me, be good of light and I'll have to reapply it even if I'm doing God knows what, I'll always have that like a reminder. Next thing you need is, uh, well, I would probably uh, recommend LVI because LVI is like a million of add-ons in one that you can really set up to your own liking. I set up mine like this uh, with two bars here on the right and the rest down here because I'm used to this like from vanilla even on in retail I remove all these bars I make them hidden because I know all most of my classes so good that I don't need to watch any of these things but right now I'm just leaving it like this especially for streaming that people can see if I'm clicking something, they can see what I'm doing and whatever. You have a lot of integrated good options for chat, for bank, for bags, for map, and literally everything. If for other addons, you can just check what I have. We can go through it. Uh, this these like boss mods are really important dbm or whatever you like to use for classic i use this for retail i probably wouldn't but it, it's not that big of a deal basically it will list like on a few bars the abilities of bosses that you need to be mindful of some AI damage or whatever uh, it's really useful uh, advanced interface options just gives you this little thingy that you can turn on and off in game so you don't have to log out atlas load classic uh, show that i think you can use it for checking your gear basically in dungeons and raids and such stuff not sure if it's properly updated for sod though a tune just for tracking your attunement project progression, auction, auctioneer, auctionator, and trade skill master for auction house thingies. Uh, classic best cherry is really useful for the mobs that you target. If you target, uh, as you can see, this Iron Forge guard, you can see in the tooltip that it has thunderclap and thunder armor, and basically this will work on all mobs in in the game details is like the damage meter that you really should be using it has a lot of nice uh, analyzing options you can configure it properly like for interrupts for dispels i didn't configure it properly on this character uh like i have it when with damage done and healing done but you can check like that log interrupts uh, for example uh, miscellaneous dispels everything CC breaks uh, up times on buffs basically everything so it's really nice and useful LUI we already talked about that farm log is just for gold making Gargul is I guess banned now since it's GDKP thing Gather made for gatherers, informant, just some set of add-ons for item tooltips. Item rack is really nice for changing your gear. Like I have PvP holy, holy, PvP, prot, prot, grind, bread, whatever you want. You just configure it like this. You put items in set, you can even keybind them. 
and switch on keybinds, but I'm not using that since it's not that useful, to be honest. Uh, Etrix Maps and Litrix Plus is really nice. You can use that in conjunction with LUI. Um, LFG Bulletin Board is really nice for me since when I do some raids, pug raids or pug groups, I can sort them here. You just select whatever you want. Uh, right now I have Cathedral, RFD and Uldaman, so I don't have to read a trillion of messages in different chat channels. This add-on will just make it uh, a lot easier to track what I want and use use it to join a group or make a group. Uh, Nova Instance Track and Nova World Buffs. Huh. You can check those out too. It will be useful, but nothing game breaking. Method Raid Tools also is really useful for, for raids. Uh, I need CD. Good for tracking your CDs and stuff. And for party cooldowns. Pally Power Classic is really important. You just set it up like this. Right click on the red thingy. You set up here whatever you want to buff on different class. Like for your rogue and etc. Et and you just right click here. And it buffs you with that blessing. Rare Scanner. It will uh, give you a notification if you come across a rare mob. Ranker is for PvP. Questy, of course, for questing. Uh, Thread Classic, you can use this here, but you can use the de uh, details damage meter for that too. Trade Skill Master Event or it voiceover is really like nice uh, immersion tool. If you're doing quests, it will be AI will basically make a quest that you had to read. You just get. Uh, AI to read it out loud in like a dwarf voice or gnome voice or whatever. It's nice for immersion, I guess, and makes the game feel like more 2024 and not 2005. We cover us, of course, we went through that. But training is a nice one since you can check you when you open your spell book, you get this what can I train button and uh, you see what's uh, the next items you can train, uh, items, <laughs> spells uh, you can train on your next level. Also, you can check the far away ones like level 60 and stuff. So basically, don't have to visit trainer if you don't think it's necessary to learn a certain spell at a certain level. So... Let me check if I forgot something. I mean, I of course I forgot something, but... Uh, yeah, unit frames. Uh, I like LVI unit frames too. I'm gonna just pop a video. Silence this shit. Oh, look at my face down there. <laughs> okay, so basically I have these set up below, uh, below my V code and above my bars. That's how I'm used to it in raids, so I just left it now. Usually in retail, I have my party frames here where my pally power is now, like in the middle, and it, it's really a lot better for five men there. Uh, you can probably do it for 10 men too, but since the 40 men will be coming out someday, I'll probably just leave everything down here. I will remove all these bars and have all 40 people here below me. It will be a lot easier for me so I can see what's happening in the room. But you can set it up as you like. Important thing on your party frames and raid frames that you see all of your buffs, all of your important stuff like this white thingy is my shield of fate. Uh, the red one or pink one will be beacon of light. Yeah, this one. This will be beacon of light. This will be shield. And 
that's about it. Like you, if you're a druid, you need your hots. If you're a priest, you need your shield and renews and stuff like that. So basically, you can set set it up as you like. This was actually a run that Hunter was tanking, since Warrior wasn't there. <laughs> okay, let's get back to other things. Um, Keybinds, that's like giga important. You cannot click stuff, never, just never click stuff. If someone tells you it's okay, it's not okay if you want to play properly. I mean, of course, I can tell you it's okay, but I'm not a casual type of player. I don't like to do things half fast and like handicapped big because I mean, look, if you have to click this instead of pressing Q or whatever you want to press, it's like you lose so much time. I mean, it's, it's retarded. Also, clicking people to to heal them it's terrible so you need to use mouse over macros i will pull those links on, on that too but basically it's not that hard if you get one right you'll probably just get all of them right these are few macros i have like lay on hands uh, dispel sacred shields uh, flesh of light blessing of freedom blessing of protection beacon uh, these ones are my equip macros so i can switch between two hand shield and healing stuff you you can use that to your advantage because you can for example use two hander to do your uh, divine storm it will do a lot of damage and heal some people then you can use avengers shield with shield you just equip your shield, cast Avenger shield and switch back. Depending of content you're doing for strictly healing, you don't need any of that if you're just focusing on strictly healing, but I'm pretty much always focusing on both damage and healing. Uh, this is my damage done in phase one, of course, is in Black Phantom Deeps. Like I had like rank one on Lady Service and everything else is pretty, pretty high too because I, I want to optimize both healing and damage depending on what you're going for. If you're going for speed runs, you'll probably need to do a shit ton of damage. You'll need engineering and stuff like that. And if we go to healing, yeah, healing is ah, okay. This could definitely be better i mean i could have been all 99s uh, so basically if this is flesh of light mouse over macro let me open it again so if someone wants to see it show tooltip means it will just look like uh, flesh of light it will use this name flesh of light to show it in tooltip cast at mouse overs and then these things and just when you make one, you just switch your names of the spells. You won't write Flash of Light, you will write Holy Light. You won't write a Beacon of uh, Flash of Light, you will write Beacon of Light and stuff like that. This is like a regular mouse, mouse or macro when I cast it uh, here without targeting. So I'm not targeting. Uh, you cast it there. It will heal that guy mouse overing over it. That works the same way for the um what's it called party frames that i showed you earlier so the idea is you target uh enemy this is enemy you cast your i don't know seal of wisdom for example you're hitting it um, you never remove that your target from the enemy you never target your party frames because it's just a waste of everything of dps of mana region of certain buffs that you get for example with the new rune the sheet of light you need to do damage at least once per minute to get your proc like 60 
uh, 30% of your attack power is spell power. And it's huge. I will explain to you later how you can increase that. So basically, that's about those things. Like, the most important thing is never click anything. Like, I know someone will say, ah, I can heal with clicking. Uh, yeah, bro, you can, but you will be 10 times better if you don't click stuff. Not spells, not... I mean, you can click spells like... I have, like, Righteous Fury that I didn't bound, bound and turn on that, I actually did have it, but something fucked up. Doesn't matter. You, know, you can have some spells unbound but everything else like all the potions all the engineering stuff the target dummies bombs your crowd controls your mounts your cooldowns every 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 single thing like i have swiftness potion even swim speed potions like trinkets for uh, pvp pve uh, even auras i mean everything 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 is bound and important thing is to not click stuff and to not click your targets for healing so you can dps and you can know if um if you're targeting an enemy and he has like some giga cast that will one shot your tank you see it casting you can pre-cast your heal when the damage lands you can uh heal like in 0 0.3 seconds the damage that occurred you you preemptively can Heal a lot of damage if you see those things. Uh, and yeah. For the other part of like general healing guys, because I'm really, whatever I'm talking about now is uh, applicative to all uh, versions of the game and probably most of the MMOs in, in, in the world right now. Like I played a bunch of them and I always do same thing for all of them, like keybinds, add-ons, mouse over macros if it's possible, and stuff like that. Um, some of them won't work because they don't let you use add-ons and macros and stuff, but yeah. Uh, let's not talk about it now. It's just stupid. Um, you need to use triage. Is It's like in real life, in real life, it's used in medicine so you're basically evaluating and making assessments of patients in order to determine the urgency of their need for treatment in wow it's like you have five people in the group and one person is on 10 percent health of course you will heal that person before the one with 55 or one with 100% of health, of course. Then you, you need to make sure you are fine. Like, you are the most important part. You, then tank, then DPS. Like, you can throw away DPS if you have to choose between saving a DPS and yourself or the tank. You always sacrifice the DPS. It's how it is. Like, that's... If you save a DPS and you die, you will probably wipe like 99% of times and same works for the tank you really need to keep yourself alive you need to watch for mechanics you need to be aware of your surroundings of everything and to keep an eye on the tank and yourself at most times of course everyone else is important but triage is that the assessment of who needs treatment so you need to use that assessment to your advantage and as long as no one is dying it's your job is done you know we will be talking about general paladin uh, stuff uh, before we go through everything else i think it would be beneficial to go through runes that we will be using uh, as before we have those 12 runes that we use uh, on chests you have option of divine storm that will be probably the most beneficial for most runs since it does a lot of AOE damage you can use it to regen mana with uh, 
Seal of Wisdom, since it will basically proc on all enemies it hits. So, 4. It's a decent amount. Uh, also, it heals for some damage, 25% of damage caused. That is, of course, better to do with, uh, for example, two-hander. And buffed with everything you can. Uh, the other option is the Horn of Lord Drone, depending on your setup. This will be exclusive with Blessing of Might, so it's not that good always. Seal of Martyrdom was buffed. It can be used, but I'm still gonna use Divine Storm for most of my content. Um, next up, the usual Gloves Beacon of Light. I'm probably... There is probably not another option. Some people say they use Crusader Strike. I read some comments online that they have mana issues, but uh, Crusader Strike won't deal with that mana issue for sure. Something is probably wrong uh, in the raid or speed of killing bomb bosses and stuff like that. Buffs, mana region, whatever. Not enough crit. So, definitely would be picking Beacon of Light. The next old one we had are Legs. Mostly in raids you can use Divine Sacrifice as a cooldown. If you don't need it, like if you rarely use it or never use it, you can pick something else. You can pick rebuke, pick rebuke if you need interrupts in raids. You can pick Exorcist for single target damage. Uh, Avengers Shield for AoE damage. And you can use, of course, you should use Inspiration Exemplar if the fight has some fear or sleep mechanic included. So you will just put this on and it works like a Tremor Totem, basically. <laughs> So we got through those, we now have the new ones. This is the new Beltron for, well, for healers. It basically makes you get spell power by an amount equal of 30% of your attack power. So, and below that, of course, your critical healing spells heal the target for 60% of the healed amount over 12 seconds. So it basically works with melee attack power, which we can use to our advantage, since we have some uh, class-specific buffs that increase the attack power. And those are rarely, if ever, used before. Now we can use it and get a lot of spell power that way too. I'm going to show it to you in a second. Also, this works well with crit, so crit is basically, I mean, it was always the first thing you go for as a paladin, but now it's even more important. Okay, so Sheet of Light. As we already talked about it, we need to increase our attack power as much as we can, so we get uh, this 30% uh, as spell power. So... If you can increase it by a huge amount, you will get a huge amount of bonus spell power. So, how we can do that? Of course, we have a regular way, having some strength gear. That I wouldn't go for that. It will be just something that you have in mind that increases your attack power. So, I, I wouldn't go out of your way to like equip strength gear or something. But you can play around with, with it with weapons, since you can switch them in combat. Uh, and of course, you can use the long buffs like Ogre Strength that gives you strength for one hour, so you don't have to think about it that much. But the most important things are the class ability. So you see now I have 274 with this strength mace equipped. When I pop my Blessing of Might, it increases to 359. This will, this will be even higher if your Retribution Paladin is buffing you. 
they will have the improved blessing of might so you'll gain even more depending on your raid composition the most important thing though is a seal of the crusader this one was rarely ever used as a seal it was used as a judgment basically you judge the enemy and increase all the damage they take <laughs> that was mostly how we used historically seal of the crusader but now since we get this spell power conversion when you pop that you see 520 now that's like double almost what i had before all the buffs without any consumables okay so i hit this poor bear i got the buff it's 156 spell damage and healing okay so i have 520 tech power 156 spell damage and healing increase when i uh, remove seal of the crusader and this will stay until i hit again when i hit again it reduces by a considerable am amount so you have to think about that before like if you just want a one minute buff and to forget about hitting anything you need to be aware that if you hit something without your buffs uh, and stuff it will drop down if you don't have blessing of might and you hit something it will be even less so that's something to think about but basically you can always keep it up if you're hitting with uh, proper seal you see now it's 82 so it, it won't drop immediately it will drop on your next hit if you hit it without the buffs I hope that <laughs> makes sense for you. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's about that rune and something that you can play around, which no one really talked about. And it seems like a huge deal to keep in mind because if you have 80 and if you have 150 spell power, it's a big difference. Okay, so let's test the numbers uh, for Sheet of Light. Flash of Light, crit 394. 263 normal, 255, 246. Okay, so around 250, I guess, for ease of calculations. If you hit, with no buffs, you get 82 spell uh, healing power, spell, spell damage and healing. Let's heal now. 281, that's like 30 more. Yeah, 300, 426 crits. As you can see, it's already a considerable increase in throughput. Now, when you pop your buffs, or rabbit okay we got 156 now we pop flash of light 312 314 330 yeah it's a decent increase as you can see it's already close to 500 which is pretty insane for such a spell which you can spam like a million times during the fight and if you have a lot of crit you will regen all that mana so that's really really nice next rune you have to talk about talk about this sacred shield it goes on your boots and each time the target takes damage they gain a sacred shield absorbing 120 damage and increasing the paladin's chance to critically hit with flash of light by 50% for up to 6 seconds. 
In addition, cause your flash of light to heal targets with sacred shield for an additional 100% over 12 seconds. They cannot gain this effect more than once every 6 seconds. Last 30 seconds. So, okay, so this is like one other thing you need to track. And you should probably always put it on your tank or someone that's about to take some decent damage. I tend to pop it on mages that do big AOE and uh, they pick up aggro from tanks. And when you buff them with this, you get like a crit bonus, crit chance bonus, and you proc the flash of light healing over time. Of course, with the crit bonus, you get sheet of light healing over time too. Uh, so yeah, that's just like a nice little thing to have in our toolkit. It's not just brain dead spamming. Uh, the shield will, it depends on the encounter, but it will absorb a decent amount, not that much, but still pretty good with all the interactions with other spells. So it's, it's a nice thing to have, to be honest. You will probably always use it on tank or most of the time. Uh, important thing to note here is that sometimes you will have to heal the tank with the beacon of light directly which we never do ever like you should always be healing other people and those heals will be copied to beacon of light but now if you have both of those things on the tank you will occasionally pop this to proc the pot if the damage is getting out of hand so you'll just have to play around with it. To be honest, you, you'll you see, you know, to talk about our stat priority. Basically, crit should be the most important thing uh, for healer paladins, since you already saw how crit uh, interacts with some of our runes. It's really, really nice to have a lot of it. So you'll have but more procs of the sheet of light uh, round thingy, the hot. You will have more mana region with uh, illumination. Uh, so basically, it will continue to be our best stat in a considerable future, I guess. Next up, uh, you go for either healing power or intellect, preferably both, of course. Uh, you need to balance those things uh, around yourself, I guess. If you have really low healing power, no amount of crit and intellect will help you heal anyone. So you need to have that in mind. I like to have a lot of healing power and see how the fights go. You can play around with stuff. Uh, if you don't need a lot of mana, a lot of... Uh, crit interactions, you can go with more healing power and all of your heals will be increased. But basically, I can't really say that one is more important than the other. So I'll just leave them at like number two together. Uh, if you can get spell crit, it's great. And then healing power and intellect, those will be the three stats you go for. After that, spirit is really not good for us. It's pretty much useless since we will be well, casting all the time. And now with the new runes, we have uh, attack power coming into play as well as strength. But I wouldn't really uh, think about those as like stat priority things. It's just something that you can have it in mind that it's not useless like before. Before it was totally useless, now it's really not. If you have like an item with 20 spirit and an item with 20 attack power, always go with attack power then. So among those shit stats, they increased in value. 
and that's about it. Uh, for gear, well, I can show you like a pre-raid bis thingy. For raid bis gear, you can find it online. And basically, with those that priorities in mind, you can figure it out. I can do another video, yeah. like fully into that mode and not to make this longer than seven hours. This will anyway be way too long for majority of people consuming content these days. But yeah. Okay, so I have this white main head. Uh, good amount of intellect, good amount of damage and healing. If you want, you can go with Holy Shroud. That's a BOE and it's really not that expensive. Got it for, what, nine gold. Um, it has a lot of plus healing on it. So I'll probably be using this one most of the time. Next part is Trion Amulet. And healing done by spells and effects by 15. And this is Cathedral as well. Uh, Inquisitor Shoal Cathedral as well. Caretaker's Cape is some Gulch. Okay, so you can check this page, I guess. Uh, they have a decent pre raid bis list uh, for entering the raid. Uh, this one is nice too, but I uh, saw it actually, and it probably will be a million gold, so. Just who cares, to be honest. There's, with the raid gear from the last raid, you will be pretty good. You don't really need any other items, especially if they require a million gold. I would advise to just go Cathedral and few RFDs if you really want to. So we talked about Cloak and this one. You can get this one. It's basically the same, just has some six intellect if you have this uh, currency from strength on veil for chest i'm using the old one i'm using twilight elemental strobe with the boots uh, not really optimal but i don't really care if you have a trillion gold you can buy this this is pretty good Robo power is just for tailors, and this is an LD. You can always get these green plus healing and plus int item. This one is plus intellect, 19 intellect. Uh, next, uh, wrists. I'm using again the, from the last raid. Not that good, but who cares? You can get these uh, exalted with Warsaw Gulch, and you get. Get, you can buy these off the auction house plus 22 healing for hands uh, these ones are actually best in slot from the last trade if not you craft the tailoring ones dream weave gloves or buy them they are not that expensive waste i'm using the of course another old raid item and you I'm switching actually between that and Earth and Silk Belt because this has a lot of healing. I'm so you can get this for like one gold in auction house. Legs I'm using the old ones. You can get these for plus forty two healing. That's pretty huge to be honest. I never saw them. I never saw this belt too. For feet, yeah, maybe this this uh, South Sea Shakedown in Tanaris, if you want. If you have tailoring, yeah, might use this. Rings, Lord Keeper's Ring, and Signet of Twilight Lord. I have those two trinkets, of course, the healing trinket from the last raid. And they say here, shifting talisman, but five spirit is nothing for us. I would rather go with seven stamina and six health per five. Uh, weapon, hand of righteousness and shield. You can make one after you finish the raid. You can make one in from engineering. But 
if you can get this one it's really nice i'm actually using the two hander i already showed you because it does a decent amount of damage and has a damage and healing increase and some attack power so yeah that's fine with me to be honest for some rotation and some specific things for the spec on class it's not that hard since healing is as we talked about more about tri tri triage than a, a, some fixed rotation but things to note is have your buffs up have your consumables up, up. if you proc the sheet of light rune proc it with the most attack power you can get so you can get this buff but basically it will be easy just to keep hitting and having seal crusader up all the time then you pop your beacon of light on tank the you pop your sacred shield shield on who needs and after that it's flash of light till the end of days you can use holy light but it's really only when you know the tank will take like a 1000 damage or even more i used to do that on onyxia on all my classes in vanilla and in classic wow well, she has that huge cast if uh, when it hits it chunks off like a huge amount of uh, hp so you see the cast bar going and you start the heal before it lands uh, I mean, just after it lands, so you can like snipe a trillion healing that way. Well, snipe is not a good word, to be honest, it's just how you should heal. You should be uh, efficient. Uh, other than that, like the rest of the abilities are pretty much self explanatory. You'll pop Blessing of Freedom on who needs it, you'll pop. Blessing of protection only on uh, DPS players that take aggro and are about to die. If you pop this on tank, you will destroy their threat and you will probably cause a lot of people to die and even maybe even a wipe. You will use Divine Shield on yourself, of course, you can't use it on anyone else. When you take aggro or when there is a uh, some mechanic that you don't have time to avoid, you don't want to avoid, you just want to stand there and heal people. Um, Lay on hands is like, uh, it will drain your full mana when you use it, so it can be used on tanks in clutch situations to save the day, of course. It will happen and you will feel great. Otherwise, you can use it on yourself because it will restore 250 of your mana. So if you're at zero, it's basically 250 that you gain back. So it's something to think about. You have your Hammer of Justice to interrupt important casts or stop a chasing mob or running mob or whatever. You'll see how that goes. You use Divine Favor to activate the 100% crit. You can use that to your advantage with the new runes. If you pop that, you'll proc Sheet of Light, pop Flash of Light, and they will both be... The hots will be increased as well if the crit is happening. So it's not just about the direct portion of the crit. It will increase the heal over time portion, portion tool uh, you have divine sacrifice of course you use it uh, on some big heavy damage phases or when tank is getting nuked you can reduce that by 30% of damage and convert it to yourself be mindful that you can't pop yourself uh, or divine shield or anything uh, until it's finished Ah, also, if you have a lot of Paladins, you should use Blessing of Light on the tank. It's it's 
a pretty decent increase to your healing. But since most of 10-man raids won't have enough paladins for that, you are just don't think about it. Seal of Wisdom, you can use it. I would use it like on pull. It will be refreshed when you hit the mob, so you can judge this and then pop your Seal of Crusader, then you will get some mana back every hit. And Seal of the Crusader will still give you the spell damage and healing increase. So, yeah, you can judge light, but right now it's not that important to be honest. If you get like 20 hits of this, it's 600 mana, so it's like uh, almost a mana potion. So that's something to think about and judge on the boss fight. Uh, use mana potions always, like that's in classic you can use more than one. So if you use mana pot the beginning, well not the beginning when you when you spend like if you spend like seven to nine hundred mana uh, in the start of the fight, you pop the mana pot, you're full again, you heal again. Then by the time you need mana again, you'll probably have the cooldown back. That depends on the encounter. Of course, if the encounters be, if the encounters are short like before, of course you won't have that much use of that that tactic. But just another good thing to know. Uh, other than that, holy shock, really really terrible mana wise and healing wise it heal like almost like a flash of light but it has its uses if it's a clutch moment it tank needs healing or whoever you can pop a holy shock and get them that a little bit of light back instantly and after that heal them to full with other means okay so that should be it for this one I hope you find value in this video and find some new information about Holy Paladins and healing in general. I'm sorry that it's this long, but I didn't find a way to talk about everything uh, in some short video because I would miss so much things probably and I would rather make a huge video and cover uh, the majority of things I want to talk about then make like 700 videos about different shit just to get my view count up so yeah please just leave me a comment of what you think if you have some ideas I should add or improve or I don't know whatever you have just write it in the comments make sure to subscribe to the channel and Click that bell icon thingy so you don't miss the uh, next video and be sure to check my stream and links below in, in the description put my patreon link with the we cover a ZLVI profile and everything you don't have to pay anything it, it's free it's just on my pa patreon if you want to spend money on me, of course, I'll appreciate that. But uh, it's not required, of course. Anyways, thank you guys for the support, for kind words. And see you on live streams and new videos. Cheers.